So I recently had the opportunity to visit Michael Petrick, the Chateau YouTuber, and his family down in France at Chateau de la Bamanier. And this is the start of the story that led to me developing an AI tool for optimizing thumbnails, with the eventual goal of giving people an edge over the YouTube algorithm. The Petricks were just incredible hosts, and Michael was the nicest guy, inviting me to come down, work on the gardener's cottage renovation, and in return they would put me up in a room at the chateau. And for some additional context for those who don't know, Michael runs a very successful YouTube channel on Chateau Life. He makes videos following the progress of renovations at the chateau. His channel is called Doing It Ourselves. It was such an awesome experience, and I appreciated Michael so much for inviting me to come help that I wanted to contribute in any way that I could which kind of led me down the rabbit hole of attempting to apply my data science backgrounds to his YouTube analytics. Michael was nice enough to share his analytics data with me, and I ended up doing a deep dive into his channel engagement, reach, overview, and audience statistics. And this entire process naturally involved a lot of research into the YouTube algorithm, how it works, and how it interacts with Michael's content specifically. Obviously, as most people on YouTube know, the entire YouTube ecosystem is pretty complicated. And I knew it was going to be difficult for me to add value to Michael's channel because he's already an expert in his own content and what his quarter of a million subscribers are interested in and get engaged by. Still, I wanted to do my best to offer some recommendations from more of an analytics perspective. So I'm going to talk about some of the major aspects of the YouTube algorithm and what I learned both through research and through evaluating Michael's analytics data. And then I'll talk about how this led to the development of the AI tool that I mentioned. So, as everybody knows, the primary metric for evaluating success on YouTube is view count. And as a data scientist, I love simple single value metrics that let me focus on one small piece of a very complex problem. All we have to do is explore the different variables that affect view count. So to start off, I looked at traffic source data. Where do viewers come from? For me as a small content creator with few subscribers, I have one relatively popular video on making music with AI that had a well-known open source software in the title, and 74% of the views were driven by people searching for that software. However, for content creators like Michael with an established subscriber base, the majority of his views are gonna come from the browse features category, where his new videos pop up on the homepage. And because this is the largest category, it's where I wanted to focus the majority of my efforts. And it already kind of answers our question about how to get more views. The way to get more views on YouTube is to have YouTube show your video to more people. And by virtue of the large number of people on YouTube, some will end up clicking it. So this leads us to the more pressing question of how do we convince YouTube to show the video to more people? This question is kind of equivalent to asking how the YouTube algorithm works, and there's a lot of people who have already devoted a lot of time to figuring that sort of thing out. We could talk for hours about the intricacies of the YouTube algorithm, but I want to make a unique contribution to this area that other people haven't explored. So I'm going to narrow the research question down even further and focus on only one particular part of the algorithm, and that is click-through rate. Namely, what convinces a person to click on a video? because having a high click-through rate is one of the factors that the algorithm uses to determine whether or not it should show the video to more people. Obviously, the quality of the content measured by average view duration is also an important metric. But click-through rate is a little easier to understand because there are only six factors which go into convincing somebody to click on a video. It's the thumbnail, the title, the video length, the number of views, how recent the video was published, and people's existing perception of the channel quality and content. Obviously, these features as a whole constitute a fairly complex set of variables that make it impossible to optimize, but it did give me an idea for a project. It's fairly common knowledge that the thumbnail is probably the primary factor which convinces somebody to click on a video. If content appears interesting based on the thumbnail, it's more likely to draw people in. Features such as big arrows, circles, people's faces, overlaid text, and visually intriguing depictions of content and thumbnails all have a huge impact on whether or not people decide to click on a video. And it occurred to me that neural networks these days can identify all of these features. And I have both thumbnail images and the click-through rate data from Michael's YouTube channel. So I figured, why don't I build a tool that takes Michael's thumbnails as an input and learns to predict their click-through rate. So that's what I did. I scraped Michael's YouTube channel, matched it with all of his click-through rate data with proper labels, and started up fast AI. So when I first started working on the model, 
I originally was working with the average click-through rate data that YouTube Analytics provides on its overview homepage. But I noticed that some of Michael's most popular videos actually had lower than average click-through rates. Sorry, I just noticed one of the paintings was crooked and I had to fix it. Anyway, so I looked into it and it turns out if a YouTube video has a high click-through rate, it tells the YouTube algorithm to push that content more heavily until the average click-through rate reaches a saturation point where the number of people who are going to click on it have clicked on it. And after a certain point, the YouTube algorithm decides that there are more relevant videos to show to, show to people. So I actually ended up pulling Michael's click-through rate time series data and isolating the peak rate, which usually occurs in the first day or couple of days before slowly leveling off. So I loaded up FastAI and coded a model to predict click-through rate based on thumbnail alone. I don't incorporate any of the other variables, partially because I wanted to keep it as a simple proof of concept, but also because training a model on title clickability with limited data sounds very difficult to do. Even with Michael's 100 so thumbnails, I had to train across 20 epochs in order to get the error rate down to something reasonable, which also means that this model is going to be heavily trained towards Michael's thumbnails and his style of thumbnail. In the end, I got the error rate down to 2.9% without much difficulty, thanks to fast AI. And this seems pretty decent to me, given that the average peak click-through rate was around 12%, plus or minus 5% standard deviation. And I'm also not incorporating title data or other factors that convince people to click on a video. That error percentage also comes from the validation set because I didn't have enough data to isolate a test set. I have, however, tested some of Michael's newer thumbnails on the model, and from what I can tell, it gives pretty solid predictions of the peak click-through rate. So once I had the model, I ended up building a widget app functionality around it and launching it on Heroku. So you can actually check out the application at this link here. And you know, at best, this tool kind of gives you a slight edge. It's helpful if you're debating between two or more thumbnails for a particular video. It's not going to magically create a great thumbnail for you, or a great title for that matter. However, I believe an AI application that can watch your content and come up with the best thumbnail and title for you is totally feasible for somebody to create but it would take months, if not years, to develop something like that, and it would require way more data than what I was working with. So if I could get a bunch of YouTubers' data, and maybe Mr. Beast to fund it, then maybe I could develop that. Throughout this process, I've learned something very important, though. Thumbnail and title are really important, but the difference between an excellent thumbnail and an average thumbnail, assuming you're still representing content accurately, is probably only 25% or so. Obviously, this value ranges greatly, and I'm kind of just pulling that value out of my own intuition based on what I've seen. My actual point is that while 25% is definitely significant, it shows that the secret to growth on YouTube is not as simple as having a good thumbnail and title. In fact, it seems one of the most critical elements, potentially even more critical than thumbnail and title, is people's existing perceptions of the channel's content and quality. And this is by no means a simple metric to understand and predict. It definitely requires a non-trivial understanding of the entire YouTube ecosystem. Marketing, media, engagement with fans, and the various unmentioned, other unmentioned elements that can contribute to YouTube growth. Anyway, I hope you found this enlightening and or informative. If you're interested in more data science and machine learning content, I appreciate the support. Thank you for watching.